Yasmin has been the Commissioner for Small Business in New South Wales for over two years now. Most of you, if you're regular attenders of the BEC, will have seen her, will have heard of her, will have read about her, and will be aware of the sort of work that she's involved in. Essentially, she's responsible for the provision of quality support to small businesses, and I hope that she thinks she can do that through BEC Southern Sydney and many of the other organisations known as providers across the whole of New South Wales. She also is responsible for managing disputes between businesses, and we in this BEC have seen evidence of how effective that can be, and it's a service you, sh you should be aware of. And of course, she also speaks up for small business, particularly at state government level, and for that we're extremely grateful. Uh, Yasmin is a former business owner herself, she's worked in corporate, and she has a Bachelor of, uh, a bachelor of Economics degree with others, uh, gained through the University of Adelaide in Economics. Now we come to the awards, and I'm pleased to say that the BC Southern Sydney actually put forward uh, six candidates for six separate categories of, of awards, and therefore is extremely, uh, we're extremely uh, pleased to see that we won in two of those. And I'm going to ask Yasmin to present uh, the awards to those two winners. The first of those is one of our small businesses. One of our small businesses that really represents what small business is about here in Southern Sydney. And I'm talking about Chulao of Possibilities Psychological Services. Chu's been in business for less than a year. In that time, she's attended a start a business workshop here at the BEC. She's attended many of the sort of activities for which we're responsible, like business guidance meetings, and is currently on one of our coaching programs. But more importantly, her business and Chu stand out as the sort of examples that one wants in small business. If you haven't met Chu, you need to know that she's the sort of dynamically positioned person that wants to succeed. She's a bundle of energy and she drives her energy forward, she drives her business forward with the same sort of Excel. And it was for those sort of reasons I have no doubt at all that the selectors at BEC Australia selected her business to be the best new business in Australia 2013. And it gives me great pleasure to invite you to come forward now and receive her award from Yasmin King. which um, this BEC has been on the podium before for winning and this is for the best metropolitan BEC in Australia but obviously this time for 2013 and it gives me great pleasure to hand over the microphone to Yasmin to uh, give this award to this BEC so please step forward Maria Congratulations, Maria. Now, would you like to say a few words? I can't imagine that you'll say no. Never mind. Speech, speech, speech. Thank you, Yasmin. And look, thank you for making the trip because um, what's really important about this is that receiving it in front of our business community is just such a pleasure. Um, without you, there is no BEC team. 
and we love working with businesses. We have a fantastic team. I want my team to raise their hands. So Jackie, Atta, you raise your hand. Uh, Gary, Ferris, Peter Cullen, where's Peter? I'll open the back. <laughs> and of course you all meet Jeff. Um, so thank you very much. Um, please know that you're not alone in your business journey. Make use of us. We clearly know what we're doing. <laughs> so come and see us. Thanks so much. Thanks very much, Yasmin. Now, before I hand over to Yasmin, I'm getting the uh, selector's eye here from uh, Ferdy Dominelli and the other board members of the BEC. And I know that uh, Don and his fellows would like to come forward and say a few words before I hand over the microphone to Yasmin. Yeah, where are you, Yasmin? Come on. I do a change, you've got good judgment of character. I'm not going to say a lot. I just want to acknowledge on behalf of the board how proud we are of Maria and her team. Absolutely. She's done a great job. In fact, her motto is, skill and genius is great, but nothing surpasses networking. And that's what her BEC is all about. And you're all here to network. So make sure before you go home, you grab everyone's card. And in case you don't know it, I saw Ford, Mazda, Nissan, Peugeot, and Suzuki. So feel free to come and give me your card and buy a car off me. But Maria, we are very proud of you and thank you. And yet, thank you for acknowledging it. Thank you very much for. Um for all uh, being here and I think it's fantastic as Maria said that she has an opportunity to accept this in award in front of the people who really matter which are the people who helped her, her, her um, I mean be such an important part of a community I think one of the things that's really important about the, the Small Business Connect program and the BEC network is that and, and what a lot of people in the bureaucracy don't appreciate is that the power of it is the fact that it is people dealing with real people out in the real world. It's very easy for um, people within government to sit in an office and um, get their sa salary in every week and not appreciate what an amazing thing it is for people to take um, themselves on a journey, risk capital, to have to worry whether they're going to be able to survive week to week, um, but have to have to have the passion and the drive to make that happen. And what's interesting is in Australia, you know, 96% of businesses do exactly that. And it never fails to amaze me that you can go to events like this and you get exposed to some of the most innovative, uh, interesting ideas. And if there was a way that that could get better communicated to some of the people who make decisions, particularly in Canberra, it would be a wonderful thing. But uh, um, and, and that's one of the things that we try and do in, in the Small Business Commissioner's Office is to try and make sure that all of your voices get heard um, about the challenges uh, and also for them to recognise the opportunities that exist in harnessing some of the amazing talent of people that are, that are out there and the fact that you're prepared to go and do it for yourself is just amazing and that they should you know, not try and make you have to do all of these uh, um, uh, red tape paperwork things uh, um, which they find really easy but my mantra is ever have you ever tried to do it yourself have you ever tried to fill out that form have you actually understood what it says and we're starting to get traction with a lot of agencies I think you'll see that uh, people like work cover for example have had another reduction in, in in premiums you know for two years we worked with work cover about how to better engage with small business and how to the fact that you know continuing if you want people to employ people, you've got to make it easier for them to achieve the goal of safe work practices and not make it that you're there just to find them, you're there to make them have safer workplaces. And I have to say that is definitely a changing dynamic with work cover. So that's an example of one of the things that, that, that my office does. I'm not going to stand here forever and, and, and speak on Friday night. I think what you'd love is a presentation from someone from bureaucracy for 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> so instead, I'll just say, Two things that I really would like. Beers. Sorry. <laughs> no, my budget, sunshine. Uh, I'd rather spend it on on Gary and Jeff and and Jackie. Um, so we we obviously. Um, 
fund advisors to be available for people much such as yourself. People often ask, why don't you have grants? You know, that would be you know a good thing. In fact, all the international evidence shows that it doesn't make any difference. What's important is for you to have a person who has knowledge and skills that you can speak to and that you don't get confined to speaking to just once and never seeing again, but that you can have an ongoing um, depth of engagement with, and that's really what we've tried to do. But we want to make sure that that's available to all businesses all over the state, not just in, in the metro area or in certain areas. Um, and, and that's what I think we've been able to achieve. And, and we believe we're now measuring the, the, the success of that. And what I want to be able to do is in, in time be able to show how businesses like yourselves that engage with this basically have got more sustainable, better profit, uh, uh, more longevity and all the things that really, really matter. And to be able to demonstrate that as a fact, no emotion, just that's the facts. So that, um, you know, when I'm dealing with Treasury, they will continue to support the concept. Secondly, we have a dispute resolution service. I encourage, I've already got one customer tonight. Um, <laughs> I really encourage you to use it. It's a fantastic service. Last year, we had 1,800 disputes that we dealt with. Um, of those, uh, only 400 went to actual formal mediation. The others, we all resolved just by being a party that was independent between the two people in dispute. So that cost the parties zero, okay, to get those resolved. Um, those that went to formal dispute, um, we resolved over 95% of those and the overall success rate was over 90% of all disputes resolved to a value of $58 million, okay? So that's $58 million worth of disputes settled that haven't gone through a court process, haven't not only cost people a, a small fortune in lawyers and time, um, but, but also the emotional cost of being in dispute and often we're able to save the commercial relationship as well. So I think that's a really important thing and, you're, and all you have to do is pick up the phone and there is somebody at the end of the phone, it's not press one, press two, it's a real person um, and they're not 12, which is one of my favourite comments, they're people with you know, um, experience, most of them are legally trained, they all are mediator trained and they would be able to give you guidance about your dispute and sometimes it's just having that person to have spoken to can, can make you work a way forward. Uh, um, and if it, if it is something more formal, they'll help you be able to, you know, for us to basically take on the role of trying to help you sort it out. The second area is, is uh, in terms of what I know gets talked about and people seem to, to get very frustrated with, and that's the concept of red tape. What we're really interested in is if you have real practical examples of where you think, why am I doing this, I don't understand, or the words are not clear, either through Maria's team or through to our office, let us know because we really do take up the cudgel on that and uh, you know, work with whatever agency is making you do it or the multiple agencies are making you do it and try and get it streamlined and make it simpler. Um, a lot of what we're having to do is get people to understand what it's like to be you. Um, all of the people who work in my team have had direct experience with small business. I myself have, you know, almost gone broke at least once. Uh, and that really does mean that you focus the mind on what it is like to have the challenges of having to battle paperwork, particularly if you're selling time. Because if you're selling time, any time you're spending, basically dealing with all of that administration is time that you're not earning an income for. And so that's a constant message that we're sending. So look, as I said, we, we, we really are here to, to, to help you. We know that you are the lifeblood of the economy. And what we've got to do is just basically make some of the people who say it actually translate that also into their uh, not being rhetoric but actually being believed so um, and you know that's really what we're about so uh, congratulations to Maria and the team um, I think uh, the fact that there's so many of you here on a Friday night shows that clearly uh, there's a reason why it's a successful organisation so thank you thank you very much Yasmin.